What's going on everybody? Jim Min here with another Omnibus and Collected Edition haul. Huge shout out to Marvel Comics for sending us advanced copies of these books and to our sponsors over at Organic Price Books for the TMNT Deluxe Edition. Organic Price Books has quickly become a great source for collectors to not only buy but pre-order their Omnibus, Absolute Editions, Deluxe Editions and more. If you use the code Gem Mint when you shop there, you'll save two bucks on every order. So make sure to check out JP over at OrganicPriceBooks.com. And big shout out to North American Statue Collectors for the shirt i actually really am digging this one uh before we get started make sure you're subscribed to the channel hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video we're giving away deja thoris once we hit 150k all you got to do is be subscribed leave a like and comment below and once we hit the milestone we'll do the live drawing hang around to the end i'll give you more details on how that's going to go down but for now let's jump into this oversized treasury edition of wolverine black white and blood all right, guys, so the Black, White, and Blood Treasury Edition is scheduled to come out on August 4th. If you're not familiar with the Treasury Editions, they are oversized, much taller than an omnibus. This is it compared to a trade paperback. And this is a newer series that had just recently ended. It collects four issues of this anthology series, which each issue has three different stories by three creative teams. So... Uh, the common theme is that they're all in black, white, and red, and we'll take a look at the artwork on the inside. Here's the back, and you can see this has a $30 cover price. If you're a Wolverine fan, I liked it. I mean, I read, I think, the first couple of issues, but I'm more of an ongoing story guy, so I didn't read all four. But great oversized artwork here in this Treasury Edition. You can see you have people like Jerry Dugan and Adam Kubert. Uh, you have people like Chris Claremont and Salvador La Roca. Donnie Cates and Chris Bacciallo. So a lot of big names on here. And I can see why they did the Treasury Edition. Check this out, man. Weapon X versus Wendigo. That was a dope issue. That's part of issue one. And yeah, every story is just kind of a little short story of Wolverine. And a lot of books are doing this uh, kind of three-color scheme now. I think Deadpool has a new one coming out. Carnage had one. DC even started doing it as well. It looks like you do get some variants and stuff in the back. So you get some bonus material. And that's it, guys. All right, so we have three trade paperbacks in this haul. We have Something is Killing the Children, Volume 3. We have We Only Find Them When They're Dead, Volume 1. And we have X-Men, Volume 3. So let's flip through these and see what they're all about. Since I had the X-Men trade ready to go, let's take a look at this one. It has a release date of August 11th by Hickman. You got Phil Noto there, Booth, Asrar, and Mobili. Let's take a look and see what issues this collects. So, X-Men issue 16 through 20. I have read all of these issues. I'm caught up on the X-Men stuff. Although I started to drop some X titles. Um, stuff like Excalibur, X-Corporation. Uh, I ended up uh, dropping Marauders. Although I really liked how it started out. But uh, I'm trying to remember what arc this was. It's probably um, post um 10 of swords right because i feel like that was in issues 13 and 14 and so so if you are oh this this issue got my pick of the week when it came out x-men 20 is the closest thing to house of x powers of 10 that you're going to get in these uh ongoing issues <laughs> the trade's worth it just for that uh so some variants in the back as well uh, and this has a 16 dollar cover price Moving over to Boom Studio, so already they have a harder card stock on their trades. They really go all out with their single issues and their uh, collected editions. So James Tiny in the fourth, you have Werther, uh, De La Dera, Miguel Muerto. So the third volume of Something is Killing the Children. And does this lead up to issue 15? Let's see. Yeah, issues 11 through 15. So this was the end of the first big arc. They went on a little hiatus after this, and then they came back with issue 16 and now they're kind of going to Erica Slaughter's um, origin as a child so this wraps up the main first arc you have great kind of creepy horror inspired art styles here it's a great series if you guys have been missing this in single issues you got to pick up the trades get caught up and start reading it ongoing and then another one from Boom, you have We Only Find Them When They're Dead. This is by Al Ewing, probably most known for doing Immortal Hulk right now, Simone DeMio. And I thought this had a really cool concept with it. This is like um, a story about 
the space cadaver harvesters is the best way to probably put it. Uh, they're out in space and they harvest the bodies of these dead gods. What's odd is they only find them when they're dead. So this is the first five issues, $10 cover price. Uh, and of course the hook is, you know, what happens when they finally find a God that's alive, right? So it's got really kind of trippy artwork, very colorful, very flashy. I like to describe it as like, it doesn't have too many black lines, right? Like it's kind of a lot of just colorful, uh, traversing through space type of scenes. The, the gods are huge that they're harvesting. And then there's inner turmoil between the crew and the other different ships that are trying to be the first to harvest the gods for their resources and things of that nature. So it's an interesting concept for sure. I mentioned Organic Price Books hooking it up with the TMNT Deluxe Edition. This is volume 13 with Mikey on the front. I'm super behind on reading these. I think I've read up to volume 9 or so. I really got to just buckle down and get caught up on these. Ideally, I would love to get caught up with the single issues because every time I see them coming out weekly, I'm always feeling some type of way that I don't put them on my pull list. So anyway, let's take a look at what this collects. We'll take a look at the artwork and yeah. All right, Turtle Power Baby, Volume 13, Michelangelo cover, Yellow Spine, and let's see what this collects, guys. So, you got issues 90 through 100, plus the 2019 Free Comic Book Day issue, the Macro Series Raphael, and the Shredder and Hell miniseries. Wow, so this one actually has a lot of great material. Cover price of $59.99, and let's flip through it. So, you got your cover page. Get your table of contents. They all have the same formats, which is nice. And, you know, wow, great artwork. A lot of my complaints have been these deluxe editions started having so many mini series and very little main story issues. But, uh, you know, I guess I would complain if they left out the mini series. So I guess you got to do what you got to do. I like how this one collects at least, uh, what is it, 11 issues of the main story. And the Shredder and Hell series was dope as well. So. I definitely want to um, get caught up on Turtles, like I said. The artwork looks great here. Look, okay, have an Eastman variant there. Wow, the art does look really, really good in this volume, guys. Nice. All right, next up we have a compilation omnibus from Marvel. It's August 1961. They sent both the regular cover and the direct market edition. We're going to keep this one sealed and we'll probably put it in for a giveaway. But not only is it a compilation omnibus, it's also a themed omnibus. It's every issue that Marvel released in August of 1961, which is when Fantastic Four issue one was released. So pretty cool uh, theme. It's kind of like a cool gift kind of thing. Maybe not for everybody because some of this material is collected in other books, but... Still a fun book, and let's take a look at both versions now. All right, guys, so August of 1961, on the left, you have the DM variant, which is mostly Fantastic Four number one. I kind of like how they edited it, though, to make it, you know, for this omnibus, that looks awesome. And then here's your regular cover by Javier Rodriguez. And like I mentioned, it collects all of the issues that came out during that month, August of 1961. So you have Kathy 13, Amazing Adventures uh, 6, Journey into Mystery, 73 and 74. Life with Millie, 13. Patsy Walker, 97. Tales to Astonish, 25. I mean, you can see all the covers here. Uh, this book with a $150 cover price, a little bit more on the expensive end. I'm assuming some of this stuff like Kathy and Life with Miller, maybe Patsy Walker, hasn't been collected in oversized format, so they have to clean up the pages and everything. Now, what's interesting with the dust jacket is it has a matte finish, which I haven't seen since X-Men Volume 1 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and I don't think I've seen one since. So they have that matte finish on it. The inside talks about the month that made Marvel, right? Fantastic Four is Marvel's first family, their first superhero book, and that's really what catapulted them to what we know now. Talks about all the creators here, Steve Dicko being one, uh, Stan Lee, of course, Larry Lieber. Then you have some strange tales, Tales to Astonish artwork on the front and back of the actual book. So that's very cool. Let's flip through this really quick here. So Fantastic Four cover page. I think this would be like a good gift. Like if you wanted to buy a comic fan, something like let's say they're Marvel fans. Let's say they're Silver Age fans. Uh, it's something that it's a cool coffee table book. Uh, if you're somebody that has to collect every single omnibus like I used to be, <laughs> this would be for you. Uh, but yeah, you know, I thought it was a cool theme. 
Will they do this with every year, with every month? I highly doubt that. But maybe other pivotal uh, years or months in, in Marvel history, that could be interesting, right? So uh, there's Fantastic Four issue one. So that's the only superhero hero book that you'll get in here. And just everything else they published during that month. So that's that's what you see is what you get with this one, guys. Wow, look at the original cover art for Fantastic Four issue one. That's crazy. So you get some bonus material in here it's from Stan Lee. Cool. Wow, so the uh, Alex Ross homage cover. Then you got the uh, trade paperback for the Marvel Masterworks. I used to collect those before I even knew what Omnis were. And then Javier Rodriguez's uh, regular cover. Next up, we got two Captain America Omnis. We have Captain America, the Golden Age Volume 2. <laughs> right away, I thought, gangway fee. We got to get her to read Volume 2 to give us the gist of it. Love this cover with Cap and Red Skull. And uh, let's take a look to see what it all collects. So another release on August 4th, which by the time I release this, it might be August 4th. So coming out this week, guys, Captain America Golden Age Omnibus Volume 2. This is the regular cover. The DM variant is actually the cover for issue 16 right here. And it collects issues 13 through 24, continuing where Volume 1 left off, giving you the Golden Age Cap stuff from Timely Comics. Pretty plain on the actual hardcover, same as they do with the other Golden Age Omni. Same Timely logo on the back. And the thing about this book, I don't think it really aged well, man. And I'm a little surprised that they even printed it. So I'll show you why. So you get your table of contents. You get some nice cover art here. And yeah, kind of like how um, Captain America was punching Hitler on Captain America 1. Issue 13 is uh, Remember Pearl Harbor. And he's punching a Japanese uh, general in the face. And it's pretty... It's pretty graphic, man. It doesn't really age well. You got to remember the times we were in for sure. But uh, when I was flipping through this, I was pretty shocked on how graphic this stuff was. You know, and you know, people say you know comics have always been political, and looking at something like this, you know, they really have been. However, I think back in the day, comics were political, and it was America versus our enemies. And now comics are political, and it's like America versus ourselves. And I think that's the big difference there. But anyway, uh, these Golden Age Omnis are an incredible way to get this artwork clean, vibrant, without being aged, oversized format, all in one collected edition. Because, man, to hunt down these individual issues, forget it, it would be expensive, almost impossible to even do. There are many Golden Age collectors that collect CGC, you know, Golden Age cap, and they spend a lot of money on that. So I hope they're picking these up, too, so they could at least flip through and see the artwork preserved i mean recolored re not recolored but reprinted in such a way where it looks brand new the colors look vibrant and they really pop so captain a uh, captain america golden age omnibus volume two i'm digging the dm cover i'm sorry the regular cover here that we have this is by uh paolo rivera so there you go and finally, we have Captain America by Dan Jurgens, collecting his late 90s run. He shares some of the responsibility with Andy Kubert, but then he goes on to writing and illustrating the rest of the series. Let's go ahead and take a look at Cap by Dan Jurgens. All right, Captain America by Dan Jurgens also comes out on August 4th. This is the regular cover. The DM variant is by Gene Ha. Dan Jurgens with Andy Kubert, and then, like I said, uh, Kubert leaves, and Dan Jurgens. Just does both jobs, writing and illustrating this run. It collects Captain America issues uh, 25 through 50 from the 1998 volume. Captain America Annual 2000 to 2001. Has material from Captain America The Legend. What else? Captain America and Citizen V Annual 1998. Captain America Annual 1999. Uh, and Captain America 24. So it has some bonus stories from those issues interesting layout here i think this is kind of the first time we're seeing it in this format in a marvel omnibus 100 dollars cover price and the hardcover matching the dust jacket so very sleek nice image of cap and red skull on the back i remember seeing these comics in the stands when i was young but for me it was all about x-men and spidey and spawn so i wasn't picking up cap back then i'm not familiar with this material 
when I think Dan Jurgens, I think about the guy who kills Superman. So uh, interesting. Uh, first time seeing this material. The beginning has, like I said, Jurgens, Qbert. You got Green, and then uh, eventually it'll be just Dan. But having flipped through this, the artwork is great. I mean, it looks amazing. Here we go. Uh, Proto side was the new villain that was created for this run. Although the run also had familiar villain uh, villains like Bat Rock, like Red Skull, Hate Monger, and, and, and guys like that. I think Sharon Carter makes an appearance here. So it looks like early two thousand artwork. It looks good. I have to. Uh, check it out when I get around to it. Let's see if it has any bonus material here besides the issues that it collects. Got some crossbones action, absorbing man. Yeah, so it looks like it has some scripts. Some original interior pages, some co original covers, and that's it, guys. So that's the haul. Again, big thank you to Marvel Comics, to Organic Price Books, to North American Statue Collectors Facebook group. Uh, we appreciate you guys, and let me know what you think about the haul in the comments down below. That's what's going to enter you into the giveaway for the Deja Thor's 150,000 subscriber milestone. Once we hit the milestone, we'll go live the following Sunday, pick a random video where I promoted the giveaway, and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a worldwide winner. So you're going to want to comment on as many videos as possible. That's it for me today, but don't go anywhere. Check out my other omnibus halls in the playlist to the right, and stay minty fresh. Peace.